What's the best cup for TIG welding aluminum? It definitely depends on what you're going to do. Let's start the conversation today and then maybe in future videos we can dive into more specific applications like, like limited access, high amperage, and things like that. Let's do it. I think this is a good application for a number six gas lens. And when I'm welding something this thick, sort of high amperage like this, a lot of times I will round the tip of the electrode so it doesn't misshape and get those nodules and little points on it and everything. This is 2% lanthanated electrode. I use it for everything. But on high amperage stuff, I do tend to round the tip. So that gives me a nice gas coverage, lets that bead fan out a little bit and cover corner to corner. I think that's a good application for a gas lens with a rounded tip. I just added a kit like this to my store not too long ago. You can learn more at weldmonger.com. This is a clear Furic number no. 8 Pro cup. It's an all-purpose cup. I use it a lot for stainless steel, steel, and aluminum. Uh, one benefit is you can see through the cup and it also kind of illuminates the way for you. And for me, that's a huge help because my eyes just aren't as good as they used to be. I'm in my 60s now. It makes a difference for me in kind of lighting the path, seeing where I'm going. It's a good all-around cup. It's really good for, I'd say, eighth inch and thinner aluminum at super high amperages on an air-cooled torch. It gets a little hot uh, when, you're, when you're welding up, say, over 200 amps. But anything under 200 amps, it holds up really well. Another good thing about using a gas lens like this is this particular one really allows you to use a really long stick out if you need to. Now, normal stick out on this, I would probably use a little bit less than a half inch. Uh, but for, for these tight areas like this, you, you need a longer stick out to get in there. So it really helps to be able to pull it out a little bit when you need it and get a tack weld or, or a half inch or an inch of weld or so in those really tight areas. Here's an example of looking through the cup, which is kind of really handy sometimes when you're welding down in a corner or something like that. This is a little shot of a video that I did with uh, Mike Zanconato. He's a bike builder. And in that video, Mike talked about, you know, using different amplitude settings on his Dynasty 280. I think it's very educational, so I'll link it up right here. There's one more shot of just kind of looking through the cup. Just an example. Like I said, you don't always need to, but man, when you're down in a corner and you don't know where your filler rod is versus the tip of your electrode, it can come in super handy. Now for a fillet weld like this, you don't want to penetrate all the way through the back side. You just want to penetrate into the root of the joint. So keeping that puddle really nice and clean, a uh, gas lens comes in handy. But sometimes you want to penetrate all the way through like a butt joint like this, in which case either a small gas lens, like this number six stubby gas lens setup, or even a number five standard cup will help you penetrate all the way through. Just depends on your desired result, whether or not this is a test weld, whether it's going to be x-rayed. Sometimes a gas lens is necessary for just keeping a weld really clean. That brings me to the standard number five setup that so many TIG welders love for aluminum. I posted a video not too long ago using this setup on some butt joints on this little aluminum tube hurricane project. And I was really kind of blown away at how well it worked as far as penetration goes. You can see it just sinking that, that in there at pretty low amperage and that's kind of what I find is really helpful with the number five because you can get by with about 12 CFH sometimes a little bit less than that and with that little bit of argon blowing on the weld and that limits the etching zone it really does help like I would be using 20 on an 8 cup I drop it down to about 12 on a number five you can hear the arc get quieter you can see the penetration just dropping in there on butt joints so I've added this little kit as well as a kit for the 17 and 18 and, 8 and 26 style air-cooled torches on the store. Again, you can check them out at wellmonger.com. And another little benefit on uh, putting this on a 17 torch as opposed to just using a standard number 5 that comes with a torch, it just shrinks the torch. Like getting in tight spots, a lot easier this way than it is with that long cup that comes with the 17 torch. So I'm going to be using this air-cooled torch with this number 5 stubby setup to weld these joints here as well as those cope joints in the middle and I'll be using this CK Worldwide MT200 TIG welder which has a really simple interface here the, the sweet spot settings are all highlighted in blue now you might want to go outside those settings but it sure does make it really easy if you're a beginner especially for just being able to get a really good starting place for settings for aluminum those are the settings I'm going to be using today I've got the amperage set a little higher than what I need because I'm going to be pulsing with the foot pedal a little bit, experimenting with that technique. 
I've got my tip at a taper. I'm just going to let it ball kind of how it wants to ball because I'm not going to be using a tremendous amount of amperage and I do want a good crisp startup. So pulsing the pedal is letting me kind of rotate my wrist as I come up the joint here to maintain a decent favorable torch angle without getting out of scope. While I let off the pedal, it gives me an extra half a second or so to rotate my wrist and that pulse isn't coming automatically like it would be if I was using the pulse settings. It's only coming when I want it. So I might be pulsing at 0.7 pulses a second. I might be at one pulse a second, but I'm not pulsing until I'm ready okay. that way. And that's the benefit of doing it manually for round joints like this. Things getting kind of warm too, so I'm slipping on a TIG finger. Shameless plug. Seriously, if you've welded aluminum weldments like this before, you know how hot they get, how quickly they get hot. And it's hard to find a place to prop without roasting your fingers. So it really is uh, a super big help on a job like this. Okay, I'm, I'm probably only letting off a third of the way of the foot pedal. I'm definitely not letting that puddle completely solidify. I don't want to lose the heat that I've built up, but I also don't want heat to get out of hand with me. So it just gives me a second to feed rod, kind of change the torch angle every dip, and works pretty good. I'm no expert at this, by the way. I'm, I'm still trying to get better and better at it. I'm just really experimenting with the technique. I see a lot of guys in motorsports doing it on chromoly uh, chassis and things like that. A lot, of, in fact, most guys that I know that are really good at it pulse the pedal on that chromoly. And uh, so I'm giving it a try here on aluminum as well. This is kind of what it looks like. Backing off, maybe not even halfway of the foot pedal, probably a third. Here's another shot of, you can just see in between each pulse of the pedal, I'm trying to rotate the torch intentionally, just at a little increment, just to kind of clock it around the joint. And again, maintain a decent torch angle. Now you, you gotta hold the torch all kinds of different ways on a, a job like this, and any, any real aluminum job that's got all kinds of angles and gussets and different things like that, you wind up switching hands and holding the torch all kind of funny ways, but it really helps to have your prop in your pocket so you can prop anywhere you want to, 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 to hold the steady arc. All right, for these little crotch areas right here, I'm kind of limited on how much I can extend the electrode. And I only want to weld in there in that area because it's kind of trapping argon, so it's getting pretty good shielding in there. But once I get about, you know, half inch or so welded where I can meet it, I'm going to go ahead and do all those first and then, and then run my electrode back into a reasonable stick out. But it's doing okay for those areas. I just don't want to weld the whole thing with that long stick out. Won't get good coverage. And I wound up grabbing a TIG Finger XL and just uh, kind of using it for a pad, a heat pad. I'm even, not even wearing it because it's just more convenient that way on, on this kind of a job. Sometimes I slip it on two fingers. Sometimes I just prop my palm on it while I'm not even wearing it. It's just super thick, super heat uh, resistant. Makes a huge difference. Okay. You can see the taper on the electrode is kind of still like it was when I started. That's because I'm not having to use a tremendous amount of amperage here. And uh, you can also see that I could probably use a little bit of practice with my uniformity. So, you know, on it, duly noted. But here at about 12 and a half CFH of flow of the argon, you can see I'm getting a decent little etch line outside of the, the bead, just about enough. The, the puddle's staying pretty clean. The arc is pretty quiet. I'm getting a little better as I go. I, I, you know, all, like always, my last weld will be the best one, and then I'll wish I had another one to weld out. I think I could have done a lot better job with a practice one, but you know, this is just a little puzzle that I ordered for the sake of doing a video because I think it's more interesting than just welding two pieces of flat stock together. I'm not really taking in much work these days. I'm trying to focus on some other things, so. I just thought I'd order this from Precision Tube Laser Company and usually something that's a little bit more complicated and has angles like this will just be more instructive. And what I'm, what I'm learning here really it seems like the most important thing is rotating the torch to maintain that favorable angle. And pulsing the pedal a little bit helps when I'm rotating the torch. But I don't pulse it all the time. Like right here, I don't really need to. Now I'm really just trying to watch that edge to keep it from keyhole away use just enough amperage to make things flow. Now there's a lot of these joints on here, obviously two sides and then a whole bunch of welds. So I'm only showing just a few of them, 
but I do want to show enough to get a lot of different looks, just sort of get the most out of this piece. Once again here, you can see me sort of pulsing the pedal a little bit to start with, but then as I hit, hit sort of an area that's, that's uh, more flat, and I don't have to rotate my wrist anymore, then I just motor on. There's no need in pulsing the pedal on these areas. Well, that was a pretty fun little project. I learned a lot in doing it, and I hope you learned something watching it. This video is brought to you by my online store at weldmonger.com. That's where you can learn more about the cups that I use in this video, as well as other products that I have, and any new products that I'm adding. It's fairly slow adding new products, because I only add products as I vet them out, as I use them, try them out, make sure that they're good. I only want to sell products that I would use myself and would recommend. Thanks for watching, and thanks for your support. We'll see you next time.